Good evening once again, everybody from wherever you're watching. Uh, this is the second show we're having in 2021. We hope that you are meeting your expectations. The year has just begun. I know you've made resolutions. Remember, we, we asked many of you to have on your list of resolutions the consumption, the selling, and the use of only genuine products and services. I hope you're keeping to that. Uh, it's getting bigger and better here at the League of the Genuine. Today, we are dealing with uh, counterfeits in agri in animal 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 medicines or animal drugs uh, you know animals as well get treatment just like we humans and a lot of us uh, use animal products as food in addition to plants so today we have two special guests uh, we have two doctors the first time we have two doctors on the show uh, dr mohindo jean i'll not bother to pronounce the next <laughs> name but dr mohindo will that do yes for today do. dr mohindo you're most welcome she's the head of uh, veterinary services products products at the national drug authority i didn't know you deal with the uh, animals as well in the nda yes we do actually national drug authority regulates both human and uh, animal drugs that um, is uh, since 1993 Okay. and were established by an act of parliament to ensure that the entire population of Uganda, that is both the animal and human, accesses good quality, safe and effective medicines. While you're still there, the human population is 41, 42 now. What's the cow population, goat population, <laughs> chicken population? Actually, surprisingly, when you amass all of them, the animal population, that is the livestock, because you talked about livestock. Livestock is those animals which you're able to use as food. Yes. Minus the so pets. what's the population? The population is approximately 96 million. Of cows? Of cattle? Livestock. Cattle, livestock. That is goat, sheep, uh, pig, uh, cattle, rabbits. It so makes... all those guys are 96 million? Yes. It and for us, we are human. 40. Yes, you're 40. So if they wanted to fight us, they would throw us Definitely. out. Definitely. <laughs> there is a country I know, Botswana, has 2 million people mm -hmm. and uh, about 6 million head of cattle. Mm -hmm. You can imagine. But mm -hmm. Dr. Mohindo, we're happy to see you here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you've come with uh, another doctor here, Dr. Wilfred Opira. Dr. Wilfred Opira, you're welcome. Thank you very much. Good evening, viewers. Happy New Year. Okay. Dr. Wilfred Opira is the regulatory officer. Yes. So you regulate the humans and the cows at NDA? I regulate the drugs for the okay. safety of the human and the animals. The human and the animals. Yes. I, think, I think I'll start with you, uh, Dr. Mohindo. Yes. Please. NDA. Mm. Yeah, you just mentioned briefly that uh, you provide for human and animal medicine. But mm -hmm. just break it down more. Uh, what exactly is involved in that mm. mandate? So, uh, National Drug Authority, like I said, was mandated by an act of parliament to regulate both human and animal products, including public health products, by the way. Mm. And um, this one, we do our mandate through a number of regulatory processes, which are identified by the World Health Organization and also by the World Organization for Animal Health, that is OIE and WHO. So National Drug Authority is a, a government body that has fulfilled international standards and we comply to international standards. And the processes that we do, we have a product registration and assessment. We have a inspection and enforcement. We have product safety. We have quality laboratory testing. That's when we test our drugs for quality. And then also have uh, post-marketing surveillance. We have uh, pharmacovigilance. Uh, some of the processes that are globally known uh, for ensuring that the entire public, all the animals, access good quality, safe and effective drugs. So we do the, all this by also controlling import. We have uh, our inspectors at ports of entry. That is Malawa, Entebbe, Nakawa. Uh, for products that come in and then we also do inspection when we go to the drug outlets where these products are sold to see that people are complying to good distribution practice standards. 
to the standards. So are you, are you based in Kampala here or you are countrywide? Actually, National <clears throat> Drug Authority is one of the organizations that has impressed uh, decentralization for mm. the entire population to access our services. We have eight regions. One is in Nakawa. And then we have also, uh, that one split it into Kampala. And then we also have our offices in Barara. We have our offices in Tororo. We have in Lira. We have in Arua. We have in Hoima. And um, Tororo. Yes. Eight of them. Eight of them. Okay, and then so we also don't stop there. We also go up to the district level, whereby we have a collaboration and partnership with districts where we have what we call drug inspectors of drugs. They are under a memorandum of understanding with the National Drug Authority. That is to extend the service up to the district level. Then also at the district, particularly for animals, we also work with all district veterinary officers in ensuring that the people or the animals access good quality <coughs> and effective This is drugs. a question that uh, I'm sure both of you will mm. uh, speak to, but I'll start with you, Dr. Mohindo. Mm. In a word or two, what is the state of the animal health at the moment in Uganda? Mm. At, at what level is it? Are we safe or are the animals sick? What is the state? We are stretched in the tropics. At tropics, you know, we lie un under the equator, those who studied geography. And uh, the equator or the tropics is some of the countries that are prone to diseases, especially what we call tropical diseases. So it means our health service has to be up to dot, up to standard, to ensure that we protect these animals against the various diseases. And I think that is why NDA was put in place, to provide a service, as you said, that you're looking at um, counterfeiting and service provision. So NDA, I can say, it is one of the government bodies under service provision to ensure that the products, which are the drugs that these animals are, are, using. are using to treat these diseases, are available accessible and are also affordable. So with NDA, we have ensured that really the drugs are available through the processes that I told you and also accessible through the process I told you of uh, ensuring that we have pharmacies, we have drug shops which are distributed in the whole country where people can access these drugs and also ensuring that the extension workers who are employed by government, that is through the Ministry of Agriculture and Animal Industries and the local governments can also access these drugs and they are able to provide a service to our farmers. To the farmers. Dr. Yes. Peter, you are in regulation. Yes. I am sure you are more in touch uh, with the grassroots, with the farmers, maybe when you extend up to the butchers. Somebody viewing you out there wants to know, is a meat chef on the market, the pork, the, the beef, the chicken? Uh, what I can say is, uh, as National Drug Authority, we would ensure that the product, that is the drugs that are used in the animals, are quality, they are safe, and they are effective. However, the challenge comes when the products are not used correctly. That is what will even bring the issue of the safety of the human who are consuming the products from these animals. Drugs have what we call uh, withdrawal periods. So if you administer a drug, you need to look at the label, what is put on the instruction on the drug. How long are you supposed to uh, pour the milk? Because the drug will still be coming in the milk, in the meat, for a given period of time, depending on the drug. So farmers are doing a lot of self-medication. They are, they are going to the extent of treating their own animals without seeking for technical advice from the veterinary professionals. Maybe it's because they, the vets are not there. Do we have the vet doctors on the ground? Uh, uh, vet doctors are there because uh, under the government structure uh, we have veterinary extension staff who are supposed to be at sub-county level. Every sub-county is supposed to have a veterinarian but I don't know the coverage for the country. It is not within the docket of National Drug Authority. But ideally if the drugs are used uh, well through the technical people the animals will be safe. Now, if you don't observe drug withdrawal period, then the products that we are going to be consuming will be having residues of drugs, and that will pose a very big health issue to the consumers of these so, animal products. So, as a regulator officer, uh, the viewer would like to know: you only deal with uh, do you only deal with the cows and goats, or even poultry and fish is under you? 
we cover all animals, including dogs and cats. And fish. And fish, even the wild animals. All animals, but whichever drug is used in animals, mm. we cover all. Okay, so Dr. Uh, Mohindo, uh, you're talking of uh, animal drugs or treatment for. Just tell us, uh, are these drugs imported? Do we manufacture them here? What's um, the percentage of imports or locally manufactured? Okay, I may not say the percentage, but what I have to tell you is that Uganda has really developed. Um, majority of our drugs were imported in from a variety of countries. But as I speak now, under the Bubu, Build, Build Uganda. Uganda, yes. National Drug Authority has also supported local manufacturing. And so far we have four local manufacturing facilities that are established. So we are growing. Can you name them? Um, here we have uh, Brentec, which is manufacturing vaccines. That is the thermostable vaccine for poultry. And is also importing to other countries. Then we also have uh, Sanga is coming up. Uh, we are supporting it in uh, building um, their facilities. And then we have um, Dr. Kira, Alpha Sun, which was also inaugurated. Alpha Sun in Mukono. Yes, in yes. Mukono, in the mm -hmm. industrial park. And um, Eram. Eram Uganda Limited is also an upcoming manufacturing facility. And the National Drug Authority has been supporting these particular facilities to ensure that they comply to the good manufacturing standards which are internationally recognized. So I must say that Uganda, we are really growing. And also on the East African arena, Uganda is among the countries that have facilities that comply to GMP. And especially when it comes to vaccine manufacturing, Brantec has been recognized as one of the manufacturing facilities that is manufacturing good quality products. Doctor, I've seen a report, I think by the World Bank or one of those agencies, uh, which says, let me take you a bit to human mm -hmm. and related to animal, mm. which says that uh, close to 50% of anti-malarials mm. in this part of Africa are fake. Uh, so if we cannot manage to keep the human medicine safe, how are we managing to keep the animal medicine <laughs> safe? <laughs> you know, where there is demand, there will always be somebody that wants to gain from this particular kind of demand. Eh? I'm just talking in a layman's language. Mm. Actually, globally, the, the percentage of counterfeits is put at 30%. Globally? Globally. Or for Africa? That is even the globally. I think for Africa, even it goes It's a bit up higher. To to 50, like yeah. the way you said. Mm. So I must say that... That is for human medicine. Yes. So I can imagine for animals it would be it is like same. It. it is same. It was evaluated around the same kind of percentage for animal. But now this tells you now why NDA was put into place. It means the issue of counterfeiting is a reality. I think the other time when NDA was being put on uh, ropes, the other time you remember of hepatitis B, where even somebody was saying, but even money is faked. Eh? So that means NDA was specifically instituted to ensure that the rate of these counterfeits is reduced as much as possible to ensure that the population accesses products which are of good quality. So through NDA's operations, we have really tried to ensure that the public is protected from these counterfeits or fakes through what we do, like the way I told you. We do import mm. control at our ports of entry, but at times, you know, there are these issues of porous borders. But you are not at every border uh, point of border We crossing. are majority, we are at least on a number of them, like I told you, and uh, regulation is risk-based. And we have particular ports where majority of these drugs come in. So we have our inspectors or those ports of entry. And we also don't work alone. We work with URA, we work with the Minister of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries, which also has staff in terms of inspectors. We work close in close collaboration to ensure that these particular products, which are not of good quality, safe, do not enter into the country. Do not enter into the country. And then I also told you that uh, when these particular products again are put onto the market, we have our system of post-marketing surveillance, where our inspectors go in these outlets they go and validate whether what was authorized is what is being sold. Then I also told you have another system which is um, 
uh, pharmacovigilance. Pharmacovigilance is simply means being vigilant about the drug issues. So also again our officers are you go involved up to in the, the community issue. in pharmacovigilance? Yes, that's what I'm saying. Up to the farm level, actually, we are involving them because pharmacovigilance basically is the role of the end user of these particular products to be able to report to national drug authority or to the extension worker or to the district authorities or the manufacturer or the importer of this particular drug that there is a particular issue that mm. needs attention so we are involving communities and uh, but what i know the level of involvement has been low but we are having strategies of uh, to improve to improve whereby we have had uh, our outreach forums through radio talk shows, we conduct TV talk shows, we have engaged the local authorities to know our roles as consumers of these products when it comes to drug regulation. Okay, so Dr. Mm -hmm. Peter, you have heard uh, Dr. Muhindo speaking and you are in charge of uh, regulation. Is it a fair assessment to say that uh, as a regulatory desk, you have not been up to the task? Uh, it wouldn't be fair because uh, we are on the ground and constantly keep monitoring these outlets that are engaged in uh, selling these products, the veterinary drugs. We go up to the level of farm to unearth a lot of issues because there are moments when products, we, we, are, we are sure of the product, the quality of the product when it is going to the market, but how it's being handled is a very big issue. So we have a, a team of post-market surveillance officers who constantly go to monitor the quality of these drugs. Sometimes we go and sample drugs from these outlets. Mm. You may authorize a quality product, but if it is not handled well, it is not stored well, it is not transported well, the quality will be affected at the end user's level. So we go ahead to collect such information. We even sample drugs on the market. We take back to the laboratory to see, is it still having the same quality as we had authorized it before? If the product that we have sampled from the market has very quality analysis, we will definitely recall from the from, from the market. The, from the market. But uh, <coughs> Dr. Pira, we have our investigators here have seen cases of uh, expired human drugs being repackaged. We've not yet seen for animals. After this, we shall be following mm -hmm. and give you some results. But we have seen cases of expired human uh, drugs being repackaged and given new batch numbers or whatever. Mm -hmm. Is this something that? Uh, you, you have witnessed and are tackling? Yes, we have encountered this. And when we are doing this post-market surveillance, first of all, we are looking for such cases. And I think there was a case in uh, Chiboga, yes, where Chiboga. we had an, mm -hmm. an issue of someone trying to relabel, trying to tamper with the expiry date of summer carry site so that they can resell, which is a bad practice. The person was also arrested at that point. So we are on ground to get such information. But what we do urge is for the public to also help us report because we can't be everywhere with regulation we all have roles to play the consumers of these products have a role to play our role as NDA is to empower them with information on how they can detect such issues because when someone is trying to tamper with the label there is a way you can you can detect especially when it comes to labeling of products someone who has tampered with expiry date you mm. can easily notice. You can easily notice. Yes. So when something is <coughs> reported, we investigate. And then we also have a way how expired drugs are supposed to be handled. All these drug outlets, they're supposed to be having a, a gazetted place where they pack and store expired drugs. Having expired is in your outlet is not a crime. The biggest issue is how are you handling it? If you're leaving it on an open show, definitely that is an issue. That means you're going to sell. But if you have packed it, and you have clearly labeled this is expired, waiting for destruction. That one is not an issue. Mm -hmm. However, people also tend to have a problem when it comes to disposal of the containers of these products. People who counterfeit, sometimes they take advantage of those empty containers of, of drugs. And then they repack. They repack. There. So we also urge the public, we continue, uh, continuously engage the public on giving them information on proper handling and disposal of these empty containers so that counterfeiters don't take advantage of them. You remember, <coughs> now, imagine if someone has already put uh, a label which shows the expired, uh, the expired date. It is a bit hard to tamper with that one. So they can take advantage of another label which has been dumped somewhere. They can also put something that will confuse the consumers. <coughs> so, Dr. Peter, before I come to Dr. Mohindo, 
They are, we've engaged with many cattle farmers and you talked about acaricides. Yes. I don't know how many will be very happy with uh, the reassuring uh, position you're taking. Uh, the issue of uh, acaricides for our viewers is, uh, can I say the medicine that uh, kills ticks? ticks. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the ticks don't go away. Mm -hmm. uh, they are spraying double the, the, the dosage or the treatment and the ticks just don't go away. Mm -hmm. So what is the message of NDA or, or Dr. Peter here? This is a new year. Are we going to have the same story? Uh, you had even the ticks attacks the, attacks the president's farm mm -hmm. and uh, he got the best doctors to spray and, and he was right in the midst of agriculture asking who allowed these uh, acaricides in. National Drug Authority Regulatory Desk. What are you going to do differently in 2021 to stop this repeat uh, occurrence mm -hmm. of acaricides, ticks, and they're just playing games? Mm -hmm. The ticks are not dying. The first question is why are ticks not dying? Uh, this problem was reported way back in 2012, and National Drug Authority took up and investigated. And uh, a research was done and it was confirmed that ticks had actually developed what we call resistance. They had naturally gained the ability to resist the effect of the acaricides. And this is due to the misuse, how people have not been using the acaricides correctly, the type of concentration, uh, how they have been rotating. The acaricides, they have different classes and you cannot stay on one class for a very long period of time. Naturally, ticks will develop resistance. You have, kind of changing. Yes, you have to be changing, rotating from one class to another within a given period as advised by the technical person. Then also, how people spray their animals. They have not been using the right equipment. People are going with uh, a broom to smear on the body of the animal, piece of cloth. What about the dips? I see the cows swimming. Yes, that is the recommended. And then foot pump. A foot pump. But ideally, people are using knapsack sprayers, which are recommended for spraying plants. plants. So that does not release uh, enough pressure to open the air to reach the head of the tick which is embedded on the skin of the animal. So ticks generally develop resistance to the acaricides. As National Drug Authority, we have been embarking on sensitization and creating awareness on proper use of acaricides. We are engaging farmers at some county levels. We are engaging technical people, the veterinarians on the ground, and giving them materials on proper use of acaricides. Because about quality, we are sure of the quality of acaricides that are on the market. We have what we call mandatory analysis. For every batch of acaricides that enters Uganda, it is tested before it is released on the market. And I think for the past two years, 2019 and 2020, only two batches failed. That is really a, a good finding. A big us. improvement. Yes, that is very good improvement. So the quality of the product is fine. The issue is how is it being used? We are trying to discourage farmers from doing self-medication, trying to use their own uh, mode of practice. We've all become to, doctors. Yes, so. they want to become doctors, and that is where the problem is. They are not engaging technical people to advise them on the proper use of these drugs, including acaricides. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Peter. Now, Dr. Muhindo, you, you can see uh, your colleague here uh, admits to there being an issue with the acaricides and the ticks are not going away. Uh, and that now drives us to the question of enforcement, prosecution. Do you have or did you actually take action uh, against the importers or these people who are doing the mixing of the acaricides? Who brought that situation that, that we had? Uh, does NDA take enforcement action, prosecution action uh, against such culprits? Mm -hmm. Actually, to pick up from what my colleague has been discussing about, the issue of uh, calcite resistance is what we call a normal scientific phenomenon. Uh, for example, if you overuse, if you misuse, uh, locally I would say you will develop mechanisms of fighting this particular kind of chemical that wants to kill you. So that is the situation that we got whereby it is a known scientific or natural mechanism that a particular organism eh, or organ can resist anything that wants to destabilize its well-being. So you are blaming so, the ticks for being resistant and smart? Uh, yes, it is actually the right word you have said, they are smart because they know that they were being hunted 
using particular chemicals. So the ticks are smarter than NDA? <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. Uh, not really smarter than us, but I told you this is a natural mechanism. So what happened in 2013, like he told you, we have different classes of acaricides. There used to be a particular class which you would call pyrethroids. Uh, people liked this particular class of acaricide because when you use it, it kills ticks and also chases away or repels away the flies. And it was a bit affordable. So people liked it so much and they used it, they used it for a prolonged period of time. Mm -hmm. Actually, in 2013, we discovered that some people had even used this particular product for around 8 12 years. So it was really expected that these ticks would have developed mechanisms to resist this particular product. So do you have a new product so now? So what happened is... in 2013, mm. after the research that my colleague is talking about, NDA together with our collaborative partners in the Ministry of Agriculture, Animal Industry and Fisheries and the local government extension workers, we impact on a sisterization, massive sisterization, and encouraging farmers to change over to another molecule, which was called anidines. Because when there is resistance, you have to break it with another product, which has a completely different uh, mechanism of action. So people changed over to amidines. But scientifically, they tell you when you use a particular product to break resistance, you use it for two to three years. And then you and change. And then you change to again to else. another. So that should have taken up should have taken us up to 2017 and then changed over to another so, molecule. So 2021, what are we using now? So now, currently, what I'm telling you, unfortunately, <coughs> is that uh, there is no proper law that is there to guide the users on what we call zoning. Now, zoning means that these are products that are prone to resistance. So there should be a mechanism of, for example, saying Central Uganda should be using this particular product while the northern or eastern or western uses this particular product. So when there is a resistance, then we're supposed to break that resistance and change over. But now we are in a situation whereby variety of molecules, I will say now we have around four of them, they are being used at the same time. So we are now in a situation where there's multiple resistance. So we have so, resistance, we have resistance across around four particular molecules. Now, what is even surprising is that this resistance is not uniform. You'll find particular farmers, one product is working, but my neighbor, another product is not working. So what is the best way to do is to subject these particular ticks, which are resistant, to laboratory tests. And Makere has that facility, which is called RTC. So you collect the ticks, take to Makere, and they tell you the particular product that is supposed to be used on your farm. So uh, what government did uh, by support from cabinet and uh, with the MAIF, they supported a study which was done by Makere University under the presidential initiative. We called it presidential initiative to stamp out resistant ticks. So when they carried out this study, they found out that there's one particular product and a particular completely, completely different class called a prenomectin. So ideally farmers are supposed now to change from the conventional molecules to this other molecule which is called... Have you communicated this to them and where can they get this? Uh... Uh, I told you this was um, a study and mm. uh, a cabinet paper was written and mm. cabinet approved the use of those particular molecules. So as like of we today. are telling you... As of today. Yes, we are telling you we are having community engagements together with our collaborative partners to first of all tell them to do the good practice, good farming practice. You have to spray according to the recommendations of the manufacturer and rotate appropriately as guided or as uh, recommended by a technical person. So this particular molecule is available by one of the companies. You know, for NDA, we are not supposed to say a particular company, but we can tell you a molecule. That at least we told you our role is to make sure people have access to these products and they are available. So that molecule is available on market. But the challenge is, you know, when you mess up, when you don't use something very well, it becomes very expensive to avert to a situation. So this particular product is too expensive that our farmers may not be able to afford. So, so, so what, what the should they do, is, the farmers, now? Because the, the they are very desperate. Is, mm. Yes, they are very desperate. Mm. But the message is, is that to listen to technical advice and we do the right thing.
Otherwise, if we don't do the right thing, it becomes very expensive for the farmer and also becomes very expensive for the country. Now, I want to dive very fast into the impacts now. Now, what has happened, the farmers have innovated. They have now started now using agrochemicals. For plants? For plants, into for the the animals. animals. Yes, an example is lava. And some farmers now have started getting their animals going blind. They have now skin reactions. And some animals are no longer now even producing but babies. But you, you have the kids. district, you have the vet people on the ground. Now, what? even if they are there, he told you the poor practices. He mm. told you one of the challenges we are getting farmers. Some farmers have turned into the doctors. They have taken up the role of doctors. They are no longer engaging the doctors. So what is happening now, there is misuse and abuse of these products, which is now bringing out a big problem, like I'm telling you. Now, also... We are talking about counterfeits in our discussion today. And I told you that when there is a gap, when a counterfeiter sees that there is something that can benefit him, by there. all means they jump there. So we got a product which was called Tikban. And it was selling heavily in the Kato Corridor. And it was being sold undercover. And these particular counterfeiters were very intelligent and they would tell them for us to have a solution for you which is cheap, your ticks will die. But what these counterfeiters were basically doing were just relabeling agrochemicals and purporting them to be acaricides. So they called oh. it tick ban. You can even hear the name the way it is sounding. Tick ban. A farmer has a problem, ticks are not But how dying. come we didn't see any arrests and prosecution of uh, these guys? Arrests were made. Actually, the counterfeiters, we, we, we got them from Chenjojo. They were doing their works in Chenjojo. We arrested them and also the people who were supplying this. They had even reached up the extent of selling these particular products to diary plants. So we made arrests and took these people. They even had to come up to Buganda Road Court. To so be charged. Arrest, to be charged. So, so you must be doing something to ensure we don't have tick, another tick ban again. What yes, measures? actually, like what we are telling you, we have active post-marketing surveillance and our inspection work under support supervision, whereby we go to these drug shops and ensure that these products are not leaking into the authorized chain. And we are also telling you that we have our post-marketing surveillance that also looks at what is happening, then pharmacovigilance. However, this particular product is usually found on farms. So this is why now we call upon the general public to desist from using products which are not registered which have not been evaluated by National Drug Authority, mm. and report such practices to NDA so that we pass support You can or check helped. them. Mm. Dr. Peter, yes. you've heard uh, Dr. Mohindo talking about tick ban and all these things. To the viewer out there who is going to have a meal, maybe with an animal product and so on, can you walk us through the effects of this misuse and, and these fake acaricides and so on on the meat that we eat? Poultry, fish, uh, uh, cattle. Uh, thank you. I'll talk now broadly, not only tick burn. What I must emphasize is when you misuse a drug, yes, the animal will suffer the consequence first. Then the next line will be the, the consumers of the animal product, that is us, the human being. Now, how will that come into play? This tick burn that we are talking of, these are crop pesticides. They are of very high concentration. They are, they are, toxic. They are mm. toxic. Now, when they are applied on the body of the animal, they will also penetrate the body and go to into the system. system. Do they go in the milk also? They will also go into the milk. But remember, it has not been studied in animals how long it is going to stay in the milk, how long it will stay in the meat. Now, for you who is consuming milk, who is taking meat from such an animal, you're being exposed to that toxic chemical from the food that you're eating. Now, when you get exposed to such toxic chemicals, chances are high that you may even end up developing cancer because some of these chemicals have the potential to cause cancer, both in the animals and even in us human beings. So, you realize that even cancer cases are increasing every now and then. We but may not know the cause, but mm -hmm. those are potentials. They are potential causes of what? Of cancer. Back to other drugs other than the, the tick ban. We have also realized farmers, because we go deep in the ground, even at farm level, to investigate such kind of misuse. One case in point is we have unheard that 
farmers are actually using some human drugs. They are abusing it for using animals in livestock. I saw, I saw in the press, ARVs exactly. were being given to pigs, uh -huh. maybe even anti-cancer drugs, I don't know. What's your comment on this? Yeah. ARVs for, for pork, um, what does it do to the pork? Now, antiretroviral drugs are basically used for uh, combating the, 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 the multiplication of the AIDS virus. But farmers have gone to the extent of using these drugs in pigs. One, they claim they use it for fattening of pigs. Others will use it for maybe faster growth in poultry. We have also investigated in some regions and we have found out that there are farmers who are actually using it in uh, these ox plows. They claim that when you give an antiretroviral drug to, to, to these this ox, ox plows, they will gain a lot of energy and they will work, and work, harder. work harder. Now these are very, very, very dangerous practices. We are exposing ourselves to these drugs that are meant to be used for human. And when you continue exposing yourself through the meat, milk that we are eating, there are those after actually also using the ARVs in poultry. Some claim they are using it for control of uh, uh, Newcastle disease, which is a viral disease. There was a farmer, uh, I think, in a young district, who told us he's actually the one who innovated <laughs> that practice in pigs when he had an outbreak of uh, African swine fever. I hope you arrested him for his innovation. We have to sensitize you. Sometimes lack of information. With regulation, there are so many approaches you have to use. You need to engage, you need to sensitize the public. So, he said he looked at how uh, African swine fever behaves and he was comparing to uh, the HIV. So you'd hear that HIV is a viral disease, he has no cure, he has no vaccine. From the animal side, he's hearing African swine fever, it, has, it is a viral disease, he has no cure, he has no vaccine. So if the ARV is working in, in human to control AIDS, why can't I use it in, what? in pigs? So that's how he started. That's how he started. And uh, he claimed that he was seeing another benefit on it, that is in the weight. And the meat was gain. tastier. I bought the meat, he didn't make a comment. But, but I think I you make a it. comment for, for our viewers, you know, people are eating yes. every minute. We don't want to scare people uh, off meat uh, on this show. Um, uh, can you give us some kind of picture, paint some kind of picture, the, how safe the pork we have is? Do you have intelligence, market information on maybe the places where accredited? I know it might be a little bit into public health, but the, the places where we can get the good pork, the good chicken, the, because it looks scary that if we have people putting ARVs and all kinds of concoctions in the animals, then maybe the meat is not safe. Yes, under the Public Health Act, yes, the meat is supposed to be inspected by first the veterinarian at the level of the sub county district. And then we also before have the slaughter. Public, yes, before there's pre slaughter inspection and then mm -hmm. post slaughter inspection. They have to inspect the animal before it is slaughtered to see it's healthy. After, yes, and then after it has been slaughtered, because you may not see certain things until when the animal is slaughtered. When they have inspected before they have seen any sign like injection sites, what, that can easily clearly indicate that this animal has just been undergoing treatment. But some and animals are given alcohol, actually, to, alcohol. to make them, uh, you know, look uh, vibrant and energetic. Uh, mm -hmm. We know that for a fact. When we were talking to Uganda Vegetarian Session, they said <laughs> some farmers actually do that. So you see a cow jumping around, <laughs> actually, you think it's healthy. Singing, they are singing yeah? transportation, actually. Yeah, it's transportation. <laughs> it's an allegation. So we rely on the, the technical veterinarians on the ground who are employed at sub county level. Uh -huh. You have to buy meat which is inspected and it has been authorized for sale. Not this one that are just slaughtered by the roadside. You must get it from the authentic source. So okay. there, are, there are those resources. But I wanted to emphasize the danger that we are being exposed to. When you give these drugs unnecessarily, like the ARVs in, in animals, the meat we are consuming, chances are high that we are consuming the ARVs from the pork we are eating, from the poultry products we are taking. So you start getting exposed little doses over a long period of time. And what Dr. Jan was explaining, how the ticks cleverly managed to gain what? Ability to resist the ticks, uh, the, the, the caricides. This is how also the viruses and the bacteria, the microorganisms are able to smartly also develop mechanisms to resist 
the effect of the drugs. So when mm -hmm. we get exposed in lower doses from the food, from the milk that we are taking, if they are contaminated with the drugs, we shall also start getting resistance. So one day when you fall sick and you require some kind of medication, mm, then, it won't use, work. then it won't work. And anyway, I am hoping drugs. 2021, we shall not give a lot of credit to these ticks and all the other pests out there. I'm sure you, you will come out with a, a formidable way to tackle them. But as, as we conclude, Dr. Mohindo, you talked about no law, there is no law, and the law and law. Mm -hmm. One of the key things I have uh, identified in the current legal framework is that there is, uh, because we import a lot of these drugs, mm -hmm. there is a requirement for uh, the exporter or the foreign manufacturer to have a local technical representative uh, to help in ensuring quality assurance and all those things. Mm. But, but I know that some of these brands don't have local technical representatives. How effective are those LTRs mm -hmm. in ensuring we have safe products on the market? Mm. Actually, what I have to say, and uh, under National Drug Authority, uh, we have a law now which is uh, under the pharmacovigilance regulation whereby uh, the local technical representative is required to report and to be responsible for these particular products when they are on the market. That is the safety and their efficacy and being able to report to National Drug Authority, mm -hmm. such kind of um, things that are observed. And uh, I think some of them have been up to the point, they have been reporting to us and we've been working with them. For example, I'll give you this Chiboga case that we talked about. It was a local technical representative who said, look here, my product is being counterfeited in Chiboga. So when we went there, indeed, we found that this particular product is being counterfeited. And I think um, my discussion now, you've been asking us, how safe is this particular meat that people take? Are we safe? Now, what I have to say is that National Drug Authority, there was a proposal from Cabinet Mm -hmm. that National Drug Authority is given bigger mandate of transforming into the National Food and Drug Authority. Like they will have the, the, the National uh, Food and Drug Authority. Bill. Now, that is the bill. Mm -hmm. So the bill was supposed to transform and increase mandate of NDA into, into so the food. So has it been passed? Now, that bill has been discussed in Cabinet and of recent there has been stakeholder consultation. So I think now we are at the stage now of taking it back to cabinet and then maybe from there it is taken to parliament. And I think like what we are discussing, majority of the issues that are concerning food and safety, we are finding that majority of the issues are at farm level, at practice level. That means we have to regulate the whole supply chain. Mm. And there has to be incentive. For example, if I have done good practices on my farm, have not misused these drugs. We've been talking about ARVs. And I think one big thing we've not talked about is the antimicrobial resistance. And microbial resistance is now a global challenge, by the way. Microbial meaning what? Antimicrobial. Some bacteria or? Yes, bacteria, bacteria viruses. the viruses, That's why we have bacterial fungus. infections? Uh, not really why we have it, but for example, if you have taken antibiotics through the food or the animal products, for that particular product. And you know these molecules which are used in animal are the same molecules that in most cases are used in human. Like we are saying, if you've been exposed regularly to these products through the meat, through the milk, there are higher chances that you will develop resistance As against well. that particular molecule. Is that related to resistance to antibiotics? Yes, that is the thing. Actually, animal husbandry is one of the biggest contributors to antimicrobial resistance that is being so, reported. So we should uh, remain vegetarians? <laughs> should we live meat? Actually, it is one of the high-risk areas, and that's what we are finding. Uh, farmers not consulting technical staff on use of these drugs. They are unnecessary. Actually, the current farm outreaches or research we are making is that ideally majority of the diseases do not require these antibiotics. But to find a farmer, because you know your neighbor was using this, then yes, also when your animal gets sick without any diagnosis or without any recommendation from a technical person, you also go for these antibiotics. Actually, the mostly abused one in animal is the oxytracycline. 
So actually, we say it is like a drug of, <laughs> of choice <laughs> of choice for every person. And literally, which is even a very dangerous practice, we are finding that literally every home of a farmer is stocked with these antibiotics. So it is a high a risk. It is a high risk. And actually, we may be talking about a carcid resistance, but antibiotic resistance it's is even a bigger high. Yes. problem. So, well, our producer tells mm. us we don't have time. I can see you wanted to mm. say something, but maybe I will start with you to give us your last words uh, to our viewers. This is uh, a program uh, that generally is helping consumers of various products to be able to differentiate, uh, to be able to know where the problems are, to be able to know where to buy the genuine. So we are fortunate that today we have had none other than Dr. Opira, Regulatory Officer of the National Drug Authority, what's your parting message? Uh, thank you, uh, our dear viewers. This new year 2021, let us change the approach. Like National Drug Authority, we are responsible for these drugs. If you have any complaint, you have noticed the drug has not done what it's supposed to do, or it has caused some harmful effect, endeavor to report. You've seen a drug and you're suspecting it to be a counterfeit, endeavor to report to the authority. We have our toll-free line, 0800-101-999. Endeavor to report. You can also come to our offices. If you can't reach our regional offices, go to the nearest district and report either to the district veterinary officer, district health officer, the drug inspectors. This information will be relayed and uh, given to National Drug Authority. For those who can access internet also, we have our website, www.nda.org. You can as well report through those different uh, uh, avenues. And of course, if you can't reach them on any of the channels they have given you, you can still uh, contact them through us and then we pass the message to, to you. Dr. Mohido, your parting mm -hmm. shot, I would like you to comment on fake vet doctors mm -hmm. as you conclude. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, really, actually, uh, the issue of the service provision is an issue. We talked about accessibility, affordability, but what kind of service are we accessing? It's a big problem. And especially when it comes to our drug shops. Our drug shops, the people we license, are usually professionals. But what we find usually is that these particular professionals are doing malpractice of leaving their people who are not qualified to and run they these come drug to shops. And leave the stamps up country. I, I know that happens. <laughs> yeah? Actually, in our outlets, you find that uh, majority of the people are never there. They find they leave their non-qualified personnel, including sometimes house girls, whom we find when we go for our support supervision. So definitely, when our farmers come, they want to get a service. They always don't get quality of service from this particular person. So we are calling upon all the professionals to be ethical enough and provide a quality of service to our farmers so that they can access good advice from the people that attend to these outlets. Yeah, I thought you'd tell us the number of fake doctors, uh, fake doctors <laughs> we have, but I think that's for another day. Uh, we are so grateful <laughs> to Dr. Mohindo, Head <laughs> Veterinary Products, not yes, Services, please. Products yes. at the National Drug Authority and Dr. Opira, Regulatory Officer, at the National Drug Authority as well. Uh, we are so grateful to both of you for having made the time. Uh, it's just beginning of the year, things are heating up. Okay. Uh, I'm looking forward to a peaceful uh, election next week. I think everything should uh, go smoothly. Uh, we are appealing to all of you to remain tuned in next week. Uh, we shall be coming back with uh, more conversations. We shall have another uh, set of people here talking about uh, counterfeits uh, in the food sector, uh, the food that we all have each single day. And with that, we'd like to thank you and ask you to remain tuned in. Uh, we hope we're making a difference. We hope we're giving you information to take good care of yourselves, to avoid the bad food, the fake food, to ensure that you are safe all the way. Thank you so much.